Vital signs, vital signs. Today somebody do some audio for me, man, something, man. Hey, beloved. I hope that you guys are having a good day. I hope that today is better than yesterday. And based on the day that you're having, that tomorrow looks just a little bit brighter. All right. So earlier I was thinking about a song that I wrote. And I was also thinking about some scripture that supports the song. And I said, you know what? Let me share that because this these particular scriptures are very powerful, especially for the believers, especially for new believers. So I wanted to come here and share this with you guys. And the reality is these passages support the gospel message. Although these scriptures and the song is specific to believers, I believe they can be very impactful to non-believers as well. I love these scriptures because they're foundational and the message is just straightforward. You know, um, of course, with every text, you want to stop and be contextual and study it, meditate on it, find out really what it means. But the volume of these scriptures are so powerful, it's so loud, I should say. Um, so I, I really have the desire to share them. And I think that um, everyone who listens in will be blessed by them. So the first passage is Genesis 2, verses 15 to 17. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Genesis 3. Verses 14 and 15. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 10. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins. And I hope that you guys are seeing some correlation here, right? That I don't have to go speak into it because you know, I'm not a scholar or anything like that. But I do have the Holy Spirit in me. And I pray that you all do as well. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the curse of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So the key verses I wanted to look at were the key verses I wanted to point at were the ones that spoke to being dead because Christ, because God said something, right? He said that the day that man eats from that tree, they will surely die. We see in scripture that it speaks to truth. We are dead. We are dead because of sin. We are dead in our sins. The last bit of scripture that I want to read that correlate with the song is Romans 5 verses 6 to 11. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. One will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, 
one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Praise the Lord. God gave a warning. He never, ever, ever allows us to go into sin without us really knowing. He gave a warning to man. Eat from all the fruit. Eat from all the vegetation. But from this tree, do not eat. And it didn't stop there. He said, for the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. There was no way to look at that and interpret it as, well, what if it's on a Monday at between six and seven and the sun is actually, you know, going down. It's a uh, uh, daylight uh, savings time. No, you shall surely die. And ate of the fruit. And what happened? Then we see in Genesis 3, like we visited, God said that the offspring of the woman shall bruise his head, the head of the serpent, and the serpent shall bruise his heel. That speaks to Christ. Christ coming, dying once and for all. Because death came into the world. And God said, I'm not going to leave it this way. What I intended and how I intended for man to be with me in communion, I'm going to do that. I'm going to reconcile them to me through my son. And then looking at Ephesians 2, um, it speaks to being dead in our trespasses. We miss the mark of God's standard, which is perfection. We miss the mark that is sin. And because we disobeyed, death is what has befallen not only us, but the world we live in and has been for a time conquered by the enemy. Ephesians 2, uh, 1 through 10 speaks to that. And lastly, I looked at Romans 5, which speaks to the righteousness of God and how we're justified through him by believing in the death of Jesus Christ. And we were once his enemies. So man had a great a great standing with God, they disobeyed God, and the truth came to pass. The warning that God gave came to pass. But God, in his love and his mercy and his forbearance, said, this can't stay this way. We praise the Lord for that. I feel this is extremely powerful and very important for us, again, as believers, to take a look at this, to remember where we were, because that helps invoke gratitude. I, I truly believe that. If we remember where we, were, where we were, if we recognize what we actually deserve, it'll help us be grateful to the God that we serve. And we will also move forward in that gratitude with power, with the anointing that he gives us, the anointing that is the Holy Spirit, doing the things that he calls us to do. God bless, beloved. I pray that this was a blessing for you. Vital signs, vital signs. I think somebody do some audio for me or something, man. Vital signs, Father sent the son for vital signs. Father sent the son. Oh, that's what I was saying. Father sent the son to get vital. Vital signs, Father sent the son for vital signs. Vital signs, Jesus came to give us vital signs. Vital signs, the Spirit convicts of vital signs. Vital signs, Father sent the Son for vital signs. Vital signs, Jesus came to give us vital signs. Vital signs, the Spirit convicts of vital signs. Vital signs. Vital signs, vital signs, 
vital signs. Vital signs. Father sent the son for vital signs. Vital signs. Jesus came to give us vital signs. Vital signs, the spirit convicts for vital signs. Vital signs, Father sent the Son for vital signs. Vital signs, Jesus came to give us vital signs. Vital signs, the spirit convicts for vital signs. Fallen into the darkness, never to be heard of, never to be seen again, the light. Sent by his glory, giving us a jump start. Now we can breathe again. God is an exodus. He is a genesis. That's how we begin again. Question, how have we as believers been resting or working hard to bring sinners in? Lesson, he brought us life from death, so we need to be living. He made a decision for us to be risen, rise. This ain't the walking dead, y'all. My the devil killed us, but the spirit revives. If we say we born again, exercise to get stronger. Read your word even longer and pick up your cross. Gaining the whole world while lives are still lost. There's no reward for riches, but compensation for souls. Emancipation for those not understanding their roles. We were meant to be royal, paradise in Eden. There's a gold crown for everybody believing. He made us reborn to obey once we listen. Romans 10, 17, Matthew 28, the Great Commission. That's the command, right? Jesus demanded man's life. Nothing you possess could be greater than a man's life. They pierced his hands like they wanted him branded guilty. Filthy I am, he should have killed me. But he wanted you to hear this rhyme at this time. So we took our death crime and traded a lifeline. Then the spirit came into this disciple's mind, giving me a voltage. What my believers need in vital signs? Vital signs. Father sent us up for vital signs. Vital signs, Jesus came to give us vital signs. Vital signs, the spirit convicts of vital signs. Vital signs, Father sent the Son for vital signs. Vital signs, Jesus came to give us vital signs. Vital signs, the spirit convicts of vital signs. This here, Pretending to life, specifically written for those remaining in Christ. God's a perfect picture. I'm the brush painting the light. If you're filled with the spirit, let's hear it. Stop trying to contain it, all right?